Yeah, yeah. Uh. Underrated, underrated, we the underdogs, underestimated. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Totem Podcast. Today, we brought you guys a very special guest. More than anything, a lot of people know him for uh, coaching sports, but more importantly, I think he's a a coach mentally and a really great mentor. Today with uh, with us, we have, uh, of course, we have Eric with us. Help me a welcome. Coach Chisholm, how you doing, man? Good, man. I'm, thanks for having me. This is awesome. I was like, when you asked me to do this, it was like, a, it was like an honor, you know? It's like, uh, it's crazy to see, you know? It's like the whole the whole thing the way the full circle you know Bef- it's just like yesterday in my mind that you guys are playing for me and now you guys are doing your stuff and you have your own families and stuff and your own careers so i appreciate you guys now we, we appreciate you having on and w- when we when we barely started doing this me and eric were kind of going through the stuff we're like kind of going through people like that actually pushed us motivated us as like younger people going going through life and we're like we gotta have them yeah <laughs> coaches for sure and then i mean i i still call you co- like i don't know how many years will go by i don't think i'll ever be able to see you different it's be- it's coach chisholm for me you know uh, right i don't i feel weird <laughs> i can't call you <laughs> yes yeah, yeah, i know, know that's that's, uh, well, that's that's what it's cool. about you know that's that's the that's the relationship that it you know that, that you should strive for that's, that's what i strive for you know is to have that special bond and you know it's, it's funny you know all those years it's still you guys are still my boys right like you guys will yeah, always yeah. be my boys like all all the guys that ever played for me are still my boys so um it's, it's just cool to see you guys growing up um like i said and doing your thing and and uh everybody else out there just you know families and, and careers and stuff is it's it's cool man you know you're you're proud of them on the field, proud of you guys on the field, what we accomplished on the field, but what you guys are accomplishing now, that makes it even more better. Yeah, one of the biggest things I can't forget, I don't know how many other more people have it with them too. When I'm going through like a hard time, like straight up, if I'm working out or just like in my, my personal my life personally, I always have two words that I never forget about you and I hear it with like your voice, and attitude and effort. And it's like fucking everything. Like, yeah. like you're working out, you're like, well, no matter what happens to you, it's like how you act and how you respond to the stuff. Absolutely, man. That's and that's what it's about. That's that's life, right? And then there's two things you control in your life: is your attitude and your effort. If you if you have a if you don't think it's going to go well, your effort's not going to be well. So, um, that's good, man. I'm glad you remember the the good things. I'm sure there's a lot of bad things that you guys remember too. But uh, we'll save that for <laughs> another the, show. There's plenty of those. Too. Yeah, we'll save that for another show. <laughs> it's a different time, but. Uh, Kind of let's, let's kind of start off today. You're at the you're at the Broncos game today. They na- congrats. They named you as the the Broncos. Uh, what was it high school coach of the week? How was that? T- talk to me a little about that. That was crazy. Yeah, it was it was cool, man. I um, got nominated for that, and uh, um, so it, it was kind of the reason why was like the nomination was that when I took over Well Central, they had uh, 24 kids out last year, and they graduated 14. Um, so, but we're up to 51, you know, we're up to 51, uh, we're young, we're, you know, we're, we're playing, we're playing really good teams. We're, you know, we're, we're competing and we're learning, you know, and that's, that was a big thing. And, um, I thought it was, I thought it was funny, you know, being nominated from there after all these years in Morgan, you know, and, and, uh, but, um, you know, I, you know how I am though. You guys know how I am. I, it's an honor, but I don't, I never like the spotlight on me. You know that's how it's always been with me, but it was cool. We went out there, and my family got to go, and they um, put on the the jumbotron and stuff like that, and got to go to the game today. So that's cool. What do you think? What do you think it was like the the biggest thing that they like nominated you for? Because I mean, for you guys that don't know, I mean, you've been a state, you've been in quarterfinals, you you. I mean, you you've been uh, known for being one of the best coaches in Colorado all the time. But like, why do you think it was this year? You think finally people are kind of catching on to see what you've been doing this for the past wow. 15 years? I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe, you know, it's kind of funny. It's like, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe maybe people got used to, you know, whenever you have it for so long, you don't really realize it, but then you step away and then it's you come gone, back. Huh? Yeah. And then, you, okay. you you know, and like going down there is new. You know, they don't know who I am. And, and you know, it's the, but um, just the, you know, the excitement and stuff of the football getting back to World Central, 
has been something that they haven't seen in a while is what they've said. Um, I guess the, the nomination for them, some, they, you know, just building that excitement, bringing, uh, you know, more players in at 51. They haven't had 51 in so long, you know. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of, I don't know, a lot of little things. And, and uh, I, I don't know, maybe... I don't know. Maybe just thought, well, we'll give this guy a shot. I guess I don't know. Okay. Who all votes know. for for that stuff? Is it like other coaches and stuff in the state, or is it like a committee? It's like a committee. I guess it's from Chassa. So it's like Chassa and then the Denver Broncos, um, front front office people or whatever, um, do it. So, um, I, every every week you get to nominate. You, anybody can nominate a coach, and then they they go before it, and then they. They look at all this stuff and then they decide who gets it and uh you know i was fortunate to to get it nice that's pretty cool but i mean don't i, I did a little bit of research that their, their records in the past years have been like as i'm not trying to bash them but it hasn't been as great though huh no and then you came in i seen you guys pretty much pummeled arvada right so i mean yeah and that was crazy doing you know? some good stuff yeah too, though, like, you know what's craziest too is like i don't know it's like it is different Right, because you know Morgan, you know it's it, <clears throat> we came in and it was fortunate to have you know it was crazy. I had you know, start with Diego, you know, and yeah. then he was with me, and then you know, and then I have all you guys come after that. So it's like that family atmosphere, and um, you came in, you came in as a freshman, knowing exactly what I expect. You came in as a freshman, knowing exactly what I expect. You know, and he's had that that expectations, and they, they don't know yet, you know. Um, they want to be. They want to be good. They want to be successful. Um, there's some good kids out there. They, you know, they work hard. Um, and it's just a matter of of changing some culture and and, and getting them to believe in themselves and, and let them know that you know it's okay to be okay. I mean, it's okay to be good. You know, and it's not okay to be okay. I should say. You know, that's one of our things that we always used to say yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Is like, don't ever be okay with just being okay. You know, like, hey, we only lost by this. No, nah, that's not okay. Wow. Uh, so. You know, I only did eight reps. Yeah, that's not okay. You should be doing, you know, you should do it 11, right? Yeah. It says 10, uh -huh. be 11. And if you're on time, you're late. You know, those little things, you know, that, that you guys probably still remember. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm still, you know, trying to work on now. The little things that, like, back then we just thought it was, like, just related to football. So we're like, oh, it's, it's whatever. But, like, now you look back and it's, like, a lot of the stuff that you were, like, telling us and coaching us about goes exactly with life. Like, whether it is, like, just showing up to to a meeting or meeting up with a friend. If you're on time, that's you're late. That's what I always. That's the biggest one that I remember. Yeah, it's it's the little things like, uh, I mean, we'll say it right now. I mean, we're a little late. You know, we're we're a little late, and I mean, I'm probably gonna be kicking my own ass for a while for it. Cause like, I I don't like being late. I hate right. being late. I always, if you're on time, you're late. That's. But I mean, with with you, what do you think? It's because you've been coaching a while. You know, quite a bit of people. I'm pretty sure you've been you've had the opportunity to coach college football or you know or higher levels. Why 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 do you like like that age group of like high school? Because I feel like you like it if you've been here so long. Yeah, that, you know, I, and it, it's it's got to be a right situation too. I I was offered a, you know a couple spots you know bigger schools and stuff like that, but um, you know I you know like I always told you guys you know to stay true to who you are right. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel I feel like uh, you know like a smaller town, um, tough nosed kids, you know, blue collared families. That's who I am, and that's who I want to coach. You know, and that's you know sometimes you can go to you know bigger places, but you know the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Um, it looks better, but then you get there and you realize what well, you know that you know some people are enabled and you know they don't have to work for anything so you know working hard in the weight room is not a big thing right because yeah. they're not used to it everything's you know? given to them yeah they can just pay you know they just they just drop off a check you know at any gym and and say they've been going to work out you know so that's kind of the reason why i kind of stayed where i am at with with morgan and then down to uh, kingsburg football central okay that's pretty how, how long were you like uh not coaching because you were you're coaching while i'm morgan and then yeah then you were athletic director yeah for three years i was for out three for three years. years yeah and that was um i'll be honest with you that was that was the probably the worst decision of my life you know walking away i thought i thought i was ready i thought i could be okay with it but man that's not who i am you know sitting behind a desk and stuff that was just not who i was um i felt like i was losing impact with kids you know like walking through the hallways or just talking to, you know just making those relationships and um knowing 
knowing you guys on a personal level and, and all those little things like that, that's huge to me. And that's kind of where I kind of felt like I was losing that. And, um, you know, the opportunity came up um, to be to do the head job and down at Well Central. And, and um, I interviewed and, and was fortunate to get it and and uh, talked to talked to my wife. And she uh, she was all for it. She was like, we need to get you back out there because you're you're kind of driving us crazy at home. So I get that. Yeah, that, that's pretty. What I mean, when I barely like first heard of the news, like that you weren't coaching no more, I was just like, no, like you know, it's not. I didn't think it was actually, yeah. but they're like, I guess it was a like you couldn't do both or something like that right. there, so you had to do it. And I mean, but now that you're in it, it's cool that you had like that you uh, involve your family in it. Like you asked mm-hmm. her, how big? How big do you think is that? Like in someone's life, like you know. Cause I'm pretty sure you probably talked to Cooper like, hey, you know, we're they're giving me this, and then to your wife too and your daughter, yeah. like, hey, we're doing this. Are you guys okay? You know, how yeah, was that process like? You know, it's it's always a teamwork with us. You know, it's uh, it's never my decision. It's always it's our decision because they've got to live it too. It's their life as well. You know, I'm I'm doing it, but you know, it's going to impact them. Um, Cooper was all for it. You know, Cooper is man. Cooper grew up on a sideline. Cooper grew up with you yeah, guys, so he he. Uh, He's he's known nothing but the football field. So he, when he heard it, yeah, he was all for it. Um, it, it. It was hard though, you know, leaving for Morgan, you know, because that's kind of you know who who I was and who you know been around and stuff. And my biggest thing was like I didn't feel like I you know I didn't want to feel like I was letting down some of those kids and leave, you know some of those families and stuff like that. But you know at the end of the day, it was it was um, a situation that worked out. You know Fort Morgan's in great hands now with uh, with Ty Davies, Coach Davies, and so you know it's, it's just is you know it was a breath of fresh air to be honest with you. You know going down there and people didn't really know who I was. I mean they they let's be honest they they think they know who I am because they've heard and stuff and saw the you, stories. Right, that yeah, were, yeah, yeah. So but that's not. They're, they're starting to figure out who I am now. Uh, so hopefully I still have a job next year. We'll see. You know, we'll so. see. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure, sure you will. But that, that's kind of how w- one of my things is like, I feel like if I haven't had a comp, I mean, we haven't talked in a while, but it's like with other people, if I haven't talked to you like in the past three years, I mean, that's even pushing it. Like, I feel like I should reintroduce myself who I am because I'm not the version I was yesterday. Right. I mean, I didn't used to think like that, but it's like a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I went to high school with them or stuff. Like, uh, you know, you, probably if you see me last week compared to this week, I'm probably not the same guy. You know, I'm evolving. Right. Like, I want to be evolving. And, and you should be, right? And that's what you should be. You know, it's like, you know, we talked a lot about it. You know, that's um, – I'm kind of that same person. You know, everybody kind of thinks they know who I am. But, you know, it was kind of an interesting. I don't know if you're right if I talk of this story. but um, So it's free game. <laughs> so yeah. yeah go. So, you know, for example, like, uh, it's always interesting to see when pe- people's reactions. So, like, you know, I was talking about, you know, how we we always wanted to um, stress that family, right? You know, because I, I consider you guys and everybody that's ever played for me your family. Um, and why it was important to me was, uh, you know, you know, I, people probably don't understand what it, I've seen the other side, right? I was, yeah. my, uh, my so-called dad went to the delivery room with my mom. Said he was going to get coffee and it's a pretty long line because he's still there. He, he, came back. he never hey. came back, right? <laughs> um, and my mom was proud, you know, uh, too proud to ask for help. Uh, so my brother and, and myself and her, we were we were homeless. We were in and out of homeless shelters pretty much my, you know, growing up. And then, um, you know, then I got to meet, you know, my my real dad or my only dad that I think of, you know, and, and uh, he he. He took me in, right? He took me in with no no questions asked, you know, add water, instant family type guy, and he he didn't even blink an eye, um, and he just taught me a lot of the the little things and you know stuff like that. So, um, you know, like I said, you know, I I can remember I remember going to the store and my mom having a list and she knew that the can of corn was thirty five cents and like she knew she had you know and she'd mark it off and then she'd write thirty five cents and, and and calculate how much she had in her pocket because we didn't have anything. Um, and that's what, that's what really drives me, right? Like, that's what, that's my, you know, motivation every day. Um, you know, it's like, you have to appreciate what you have now because you have to remember where you're at, right? And you always want to move and get better. You don't want to go back to no, that place. You, you, you know, you don't. And I, but that, I could very easily make excuses for myself and be mad at the world about that stuff, but it doesn't do you any good, right? And, uh, it just, 
what what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? And that's yeah. kind of where we're at. Yeah, I, I heard a I heard a quote. Uh, I forget I forget who who's from, but I heard is like when you victimize yourself, nobody wants to help you. But when you actually do stuff, like want to improve yourself, people, you know, and that's kind of what you're saying. Like don't like feel sorry for so like you know right. you just made it make you stronger. But on some of that, like talk to me a little bit because you said about like uh, that was your motivation. I kind of want to get your your take your di- your difference between discipline and motivation because motivation comes and goes yeah. but if you're fucking disciplined you're I mean you stick to it and what what do you what's your take so you know the thing is is like like I I, I mean I could tell I could yell at Eric all the time and tell him you know what um you got to make this block you got why are you missing this block you know well, Eric's not missing that block on purpose Right. Well, maybe, maybe sometimes, maybe. Well, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean? But so my thing is like, my thing is like, it's tough love. Right. So um, if I'm always, if, if I'm always like disciplining you and then there's no reason why there's no, like, there's no outside Incentive, the box. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, I'm just, I'm just telling you what's happening now. I'm not giving you the roadmap of where we need to be. Eric, man, I need you to get your head inside there so he doesn't slip off and, and blow up the trap. Oh, okay, that makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, my thing with motivation is like, um, you you know, that old, it's an old saying, but you know, ki- kids don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? That's, so kids, that's, that's good. That's yeah. Good. Ki- that's so a good one. so and that's how I always was because I don't you know. I could be one there be like, hey, I know all this and this and this and this and this. You guys don't care about that. That doesn't mean nothing to mm-hmm. you. But if I get back on your level and and I do it to a point to where, you know, I my goal was that um, we, you know, I, if you always noticed, I never used the word I when we talked about football, our family. Yeah. It's yeah, always, always we because it's not about me. It's about us. And, you know, and, um, you, you know, I, and you guys have heard this too is like, if you do good, I'm in your corner 100%. If you do bad, I'm still in your corner 100%. Because it's not, what good is it for you to be okay with somebody that's just doing okay? You know, like always praising them. And then all of a sudden they make a mistake and like, I don't need you. Right? That's not, that's, not what, that's not what the world needs anymore. You know, and that's what so many people do nowadays is like they're always ready to celebrate the, the awesome, the proud, you know, the positive stuff but the negative stuff man we ain't touching that because that doesn't look good on me because i'm associated with it and that's kind of where i'm at and at the end of the day if if i could get you guys to run through a wall for me with me and all that we were going to be successful right yeah um Mm -hmm. did i have to discipline absolutely i disciplined but it was it was more you know it's like more of like a it was like you know like a kitchen table type discipline you know it's like like if we were a family and say say you're ineligible, you know, and and you know, and then I talk to you about it being, you know, why why is it important to be ineligible? You know, you're letting down our team, you're letting down your family, you're letting down your brothers, you're letting down everybody, you're letting down your family, and then you know, it's like kind of like, oh, okay, I see where you're going with this. Um, that you know, that's kind of what I just man, I just I love the motivational part of, of the whole. The whole game, the whole aspect, and you know, and I think if you take care of the little things, the big things take care of themselves. Yeah, that's perfect. And with all that stuff that you said, like you do have the good positive things or the negative things. I mean, I, I can one hundred percent test that. I mean, you know that the incident I had when I when, we're, when I was there. But I mean, like I one hundred percent attest to that. And I, and I mean, it's like for real. You're not lying. Like when you say that. And what did I tell you? I said I love you. Yeah. But you understand. The hardest part is you're gonna stand on the sideline and you're gonna watch us win. Yeah. And that was the yeah. hardest part, right? Yeah, it was. But I but you know, that's the thing, like I mean, I still tell you guys I love you. Every time I see you guys, you know, anybody, you know, that's played for me, the word I love you, and it's not just something I say just to say, but it's it is genuine, you know? And that's that's the thing. Like, it was hard. It was hard for me to to lose you, not because you're a great player. But because I felt like I, I failed by not giving you enough incentive not to do something like that. But I didn't turn my back on you. I hope you don't feel that way. And oh, I, no, no. I felt. And I supported you. And, and we uh, – it was it was a life lesson, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. And I we, mean, I feel the other way around. I mean, like how you said, like, 
you're gonna stand there and do I, I I felt like I let everybody everybody else down, you know? And it's like <laughs> and then you're like, Yeah, you're gonna watch this one. and it did happen, you know, you're just standing there and I mean it That one burns, yeah. It sucks, but I, I even mean, kinda like felt it from from the stands up here. Cause I got a while we we'd still, like still go to the games and stuff and then just like being going out there and like not watching my brother play, I was like Damn, yeah. like watching him in his jersey, yeah. Yeah, like I don't wanna like but the, the, like sacrifice something that's gonna cost me that opportunity <laughs> to be out there with like my family. One, one, one of the biggest things I've learned is like it's a it's a saying. It's like if you mess up once, it's a mistake. If you do it more than multiple times, it's a choice. Absolutely. And it's like the, and I, I and I keep I take that with me every like you can take you can learn or not. You know yeah. what's, what's gonna happen. And that's the thing, right? Is like you always want to make it to where it's so special like you don't want a chance of losing it you don't want a chance of make, yeah. making a mistake or you know you don't want a chance of of sitting on the sidelines you know that's something that we always always strive for is, is like we wanted to make it bigger than what it was you know yeah no that was that was big for sure but uh i like how you're talking about a little bit kind of if you want to stay on the top a little bit about like your childhood and stuff like that because then you went from there and how, how was your transition because then you went to adam state right mm -hmm. right after so talk to us a little bit about that experiences so how, how tough that was because i mean you guys said you guys i mean you're, you're yeah so you're it, rough. it was uh yeah and you know so finishing that up you know my mom like i said she's she's my hero because she's my rock she's my she's my everything you know she was my she was she was my Santa, my Easter Bunny. You know, she was everything. But, you know, she also uh, has buried her her mom, her brother, and my brother, in her lifetime. You know, and, and a mom shouldn't have to do that. And um, so that's always been tough on me too, is is losing, losing my brother. And you know, but that's, you know, that ties into what we always talked about. Like you just didn't know how much time you had, right? You play every play like it's your last play, right? Right, remember that, and then you play. Yeah. With oh yeah, yeah. Play with Mustang Pride. You got a yeah. band of brothers. You remember that Mustang Creed, right? Yeah, for sure. And that's true, you know. And that's kind of where I was at, you know. And I, you know, thinking about it now, I mean, driving through by the cemetery, I look over there in that one little plot. There's five. There's five football players, you know. That, yeah, that are, that's crazy. That have lost, you know, lost the battle. Um, so that's been that's been tough, you know. And and so when I give. You know, for high school, you know, that was kind of my motivation all the way through is because I lost my brother when he was a fre when I was a freshman. And um, and then I got hurt my senior year, and, and uh, um, so I had to do some rehab. So but then I got all the scholarships were gone, right? So I didn't have a chance for that. So I had a, I had a walk-on, and um, I was a preferred walk-on is what they called it. And, and I just, you know, I just had to have that, that attitude that I was not going to not be denied um, and by the time I was done, I was on, I was on scholarship. Um, so that was, that was a good experience. I mean, that was, that was good because, you know, in high school, you know, it's kind of, it came kind of easy and then all of a sudden everybody was that good. Right. And it was, it was like, you know, you had to step up your game. Yeah. yeah you're yeah. like the best one that you go here and it's like, nah, yeah, I'm just like an average yeah, guy. I'm just an average guy. Right. And so that was something that you had to work through and, and, and some adversity and stuff like that. So, um, and I use all that. I use that till the day about the, you know, how you can face adversity and you can, there's two ways to go, right? The easy way. You know, everybody goes out, a lot of people go that way, but the hard way is to, to figure out how to get over it and find a solution. When, when you're in high school, were you kind of like, the, do you kind of see like, you see a certain player, like, that have you seen not, like no names or anything, but like that you've seen in the past that you're just like, I feel like I was that kind of kid, you know, like. Do you kind of see yourself in that? And, and yeah, like, I, and I see a lot of I see I see it in all all different. You know, my brother, my brother was the other way, right? My brother was in and out of, of boy home boys homes, and he was always doing something stupid to get himself in trouble, right? Um, so I I see that you know, and I'm able to to talk about that, and then you know I was I was on that same path until my my dad came in the picture and kind of, you know, he was a military guy and it was like straight strict and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I use a lot of those life lessons and I can see it, you know, and, um, I, hopefully that's the reason why I make connections like I do with, with like you guys and everybody else that's ever played for me is like, I see it from all different, from all lenses, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, because usually people see it from the lens that it's more convenient for them. You right. Know? And they're like, oh, no, it's because I had it. They say, uh, like, why are you this way? You know, it's because my dad was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be like, oh, why are you this way? Why don't you drink? You know, they have the ad. And then the, it's because my dad was an alcoholic, you know. You right. know, it's, it depends what if you want to victimize yourself or not, you know, Absolutely. if you want to stand up. Yep, that's a, that's a good point, you know. And then, because uh, you got, I mean, I was kind of doing some research on you have quite a bit of degrees no they they've gotten from everywhere yeah and some of them have been lately no you haven't yeah like, I, had haven't get, I had to get some i had to get some um for some of the jobs that i got but yeah i was we were fortunate to get some uh you know some master degrees throughout my my career and stuff but um it's been it's been it's been good it's been it's been hard um you know it's like you but i don't ever want to stop learning like i like ever like i, I you know, with school or football, you know, I'm always, I'm always trying to find something, you know, because, um, if you ever think that you're done learning, you're done with, with whatever point you're doing, because you'll never grow. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, I've seen some people see you and they're probably like, Oh, he, he has it all made and stuff. But I've seen some like, I've been probably like the last year that you've gotten, like, you're still like evolving yourself, you know, at this, this, uh, the step of the game, you know, you're still, like in different, like you said, different areas in football. Or like, why? Why do you think? Why do you do it? To grow. Like I don't. I don't like to gr to grow to for who? Like for yourself or for your family and kids to see that? Like yeah. You got it. Well, know. yeah. For for yeah for me, you know, just to get that that idea of uh, you know, yes, I can. Um, but at the same time, you know, for for my son and my daughter to to let them know that uh never to stop pushing never stop to you know growing or never stop trying to uh to better yourself because if you better yourself you're going to better them you know and at the end of the day it's a it's a it's not always just about you it's you know you got you got a family that you got to help you know and and some of those things were um you know done um and my wife did the same thing. She just got her master's in, in uh, counseling, you know, oh, really? and, and awesome. so, Congrats to her on that. yeah, because she, you know, then that, that helps her with her job, right? And now she's able to do some different things that, that uh, she wasn't be able to because of uh, her degree, but you could, you know, and that's the thing, right? You could be like, well, I don't know if you guys remember me always saying like, you know, what ifs, you know, like if I, if you don't think you can do it now, you never think you'll be able to do it. Like if I, like, I don't think I'm good enough for this job. Well, then you're never going to get that job. Well, I'm not smart enough to get a master's degree. Well, then you're never going to get a master's degree because at the start of this podcast, it all comes back to those two, to those two letters, right? It's yeah. your attitude and effort. Do you, do you want to be a better man? Do you want to be a better person? Then your effort's got to be that. If you think, oh, the world's against me, your effort's going to be, oh, the world's against me and I'm never going to go forward. Yeah, that, that, no, that's pretty good. But a little bit on on the on all that on the selfish level because I'm a dad too. So it's like I always like to see other dads that are like doing impactful stuff and stuff with their families. So like, a question for you is like, what's the best or what's the the best thing that you've learned from being a dad? Seeing with like reflected with your kids because the kids they'll they'll they learn from what they see. You can yeah. be like, hey. Uh, you know, you got to eat your, eat healthier. You got to do it. If they don't eat see you doing it, right. if they don't see you doing stuff or working out, they're not going to do it. And anymore. that's exactly the point, right? That, and that, that's kind of helped you. You know, I think, I think I became a better coach when I became a, a dad as well, because, um, I wanted, I wanted to coach like I would want my son to be coached. Right. I want to coach like I want my daughter to be coached. I want to be a man that I want to be a man in a, you know, an example for my, my my son and my daughter so how how i treat my wife is like a queen is how i want my son to treat you know his future his future wife and then to let my daughter know that this is how you're supposed to be treated like it's not okay just to you know to let somebody do something that's not okay you know and um it's it's good man it's it's a it's a it's probably the coolest uh, title you can ever have is being a dad um and you're right because you 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 have the entire thing of clay and you get to mold it. And, um, you know, your, your actions are, are, are what you see. And like, it's, you know, it's like we used to say, it was all eyes are on us, right? Yeah, yeah. All eyes are on us as, as a, as, as a 
football player, as a coach, and everything. No, but but more importantly, they're all on you when you're when you're a dad. Because if you know, if I'm going to lose my temper and I'm going to you know throw stuff around or cuss all the time, well, then that's okay for my kids to do that. You know, and when they get mad, instead of you know, hey, that's not that's not how we should react. This is, you know, so how how you can handle different problems, how you can solutions, or you know how how to react to to adversity is is something you can teach at a young age, not by sitting down and be like telling them because you guys both know Cooper. He ain't gonna listen to you when he's five I years know. old. No. Like, <laughs> he, he, like, hey, Cooper, this is how you. No, he ain't gonna do that. But if he sees you, then you're like, oh, okay. But I'm telling you right now. My son has learned a lot more from watching you guys and all my guys on the field than than you guys probably know. And like I said, you guys you guys probably still don't understand like when I told you this, but you guys were all eyes were on you and you guys were heroes, right? He still knows you guys. When I told him where I was coming tonight, he was like, "Oh yeah, he, you know, he knew exactly when you guys played and what positions you played." He knows everything. Yeah, it's crazy. And he, was, he was like, "Oh, yeah, Monaco had the ugly white helmets, and Eric had the cool black helmets. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know, they know everything, and it and it kind of goes back to it's like you said, like like we're heroes. They look up to us because it goes back to the, they say you're a mixture of the five people you hang out most with. Mm-hmm. And if he's just hanging out with and seeing us, I mean, that's kind of what you what you want to be, you know? Cause right. They, I yeah. mean, that's good because if you're hanging out with like. If you're hanging out with four idiots, I mean, you're gonna be the four. Yep. Idiots, you're gonna be the fifth. But it's like you're hanging out with like people that are improving your life. I mean, it, it's that's yeah. Where it goes. It's something something kind of I learned uh, or heard recently was like, uh, who's your Mount Rushmore? You know? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. who's your Mount Rushmore? And like if you can say who your Mount Rushmore is, that's gonna tell a lot of who you are, right? Yeah. And who you want to be. And then it, with me with that, I always see like that. We have mentors like that we go or see, but I mean, once you feel like I'm, once I feel like I'm getting there, like I gotta look around and find one that's a little bit bigger. Because then w- once you're like the badass, your circles like, I mean, I got into that position in my life, like younger, like what, after like college and everything, I was, and I was like, nah, I need something else, you know, I need something yeah. bigger, I need some, I need bigger mountains to climb and bigger stuff. But I mean, b- back going on the kids, like, like my my daughter, she, like. She, they're they're exactly like us because i mean i question everything you'll be like oh you get this 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 why and i'll be like why and then i'll tell her to do something why yeah why and then it pisses me off oh, yeah. like and then my wife's like she, she's just doing what you yeah. do you know and i'm just like god you just, have, even just even take even a deep breath to her or anything she's like but why and it, it is you're just like oh. and then go, going on something like that what, what's I don't know if you want to like kind of go on that, but it's like, what's the hardest question that your daughter has asked you or your son that you felt like, oh, you just got like a knot in your throat, like to answer? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's asked he's asked some good ones like, uh, you know, why? Because you know how I am, right? He's like, why do you get so angry so fast sometimes, and. Uh, and I could very easily say is because well that's how that's how I was when I was growing up or you know I could give them all the excuses, but it made me stop and think. But like yeah, you're exactly right. You know what I mean. So it's kind of funny. It was like we go back to like they teach us they teach us just as much as we're teaching them. To be honest with you, yeah. if you stop oh, yeah. and let them, for sure, they they're a special tool. And if you just stop back and just let them listen, you know it's it's you know like. You know, it, it's hard for me too because you know I'm not a I'm not a real emotional person like about crying and stuff like that. But you know, like if something happened, I'm be like, hey, it doesn't make you less of a man if you if you cry and stuff. And he goes, but you never cry, and that's and that's that's a tough one too. You know, yeah. because I'm like, because my my shield and my guard up is 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 pretty high for so many years. It's it's hard for that to to ever change. But um, yeah, those those things are. You know, one of the ones that was tough though is like I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Was like one time I was going to practice and he goes, "How come you spend more time with those guys than you do with me?" And that one got you. He's like, Damn. yeah. Damn. So and that's why he started going with me more. You know what I mean? And like involving him and and bringing him along and and doing my job, but but still having time, you know, with him. You know, and um, 
you know that's one thing that that you guys make sure you guys do is is enjoy those moments and enjoy the those little things like that you know because it goes fast you know next week he's gonna be 13 you know it's crazy and crazy. My, uh, my daughter we've known him ever since he's like he was already, a baby. I, know, <laughs> I know my you know and we, we go on father and daughter dates my my daughter and i you that's know awesome. and to to you know to have her time you know because it's always you know it's always sports 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 you know and she's she's athletic and she likes it too but you know there's times that she just wants to just press the out. pause button yeah she just relax. wants to go on a date with her dad and go go eat and and do all those kind of things like that you know it's like i don't know if you've seen it but i had a dance dad shirt like she made me a uh it was all glittery and everything and she was pretty proud of it and i you know i wore yeah. it and she's like you really gonna wear that i'm like, absolutely i'm gonna wear that because she's got to know that she's important too um and and i need to do that you know for my wife as well my like day in and day out you gotta you gotta remember you gotta remember who who your tight circle is right and take care of them because at the end of the day those are the ones that are going to have your back no matter what. Yeah, no matter. And that's got to be tough, especially like during the football season because like you're coaching throughout the day, and then after like the school like day's over, you still got to go to practice and stuff. Yeah. And still got to like watch film on the other team and all that stuff. Yeah. I imagine it's got to be even harder with like a new team and everything like this year. It, it is tough, and it's like it's like one of those things you got to do is just like time management. You got to like because you get caught up, man. I, I and I'm I'm. I wish I could tell you that. Oh no, I don't do that, but I do still. Um, but going back to to uh, you know kids watching you, I remember this the story. Christy tells me one time. She goes, "Hey, can you watch film like maybe at school or something?" I'm like, "Why?" And Cooper's like three, and she's like, "Well, he grabbed the the calculator and he was like pressing it, and he was like, come on, come on, <laughs> come on.'" I'm like, "Well, if we played better, he wouldn't be so mad." She goes, "I know, but he's watching you yell at the TV, so." Yeah, he, he did that at an early age. He probably said some not good words too, but I don't know. Yeah. Now, with all that stuff they say, you like, your time, we appreciate you giving giving you some of our time because, I mean, that's something we don't get back is time. But, I mean, like, today's Sunday. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could be with your family and stuff. But a little bit on that, like, what made you – you say you go on d uh, daddy-daughter dates. What made you start doing that? Did she kind of be like, hey, Dad, let's go to the movies? Or, or, or how was how was that? Because, I mean, I have a daughter. I'm sorry, I kind of get to the selfish part. Like, I want to, why? Like, because, because before you know it, it's gone. Like, before you know it, it's gone. Like, um, but did you see somebody like else doing it? Or you're no, just like, I just, I, no, I need no, to appreciate this no, more. No, it was what? like, uh, it was just, you know, just something that I wanted to do because. It, time goes by so fast, you know, and, and like I, I get caught up, and then I look at her, and I just I like I'm like, man, she's getting big, you know, she's, yeah. you know, and and um, she's awesome, but she's always in the shadows. Let's be honest, she's yeah. in the shadows right now, of, of, you know, Cooper and and me, and you know, and she, she but she's like, uh, I was excited to have a daughter because I thought, I was like, oh man, somebody like you know you can cuddle with, or something. she's meaner than Cooper, like, she's like. <laughs> She's so mean, man. But, uh, um, but I, I mean, I don't know how religious you are, but it's like God gives us what, what we need, not what we want. Yep, exactly. And that's, yeah, and that's that's very true. At it's, that time, it maybe in your life when you had her, I mean, it's probably what you, what we needed, you know. And that's it, how I feel. It was for me, you know. It is good because you know it's kind of funny, you know, like you could be upset because you lose a you lose a football game, but she, you know. I'll never forget, you know, walking off a of legion, you know, if win or lose, you know, like you see, you see your kids running at you, you know, and giving you big hugs and they don't, they don't know that, yeah. you know, we, we messed up or we didn't play well, or we lost this game because of this, or we, you know, or that we beat, you know, Holy Family or something like that. They don't, they don't remember those things. They just, they just know you as your dad and like your hero, you know, and that's something that, uh, um, you know, you have to keep close because it is sad, you know, and it, you, to think about, like, and to be honest with you, like, um, going to all these funerals, of, yeah. you know, going to all these funerals, it, it, like, I'm sitting back and I'm just like, what am I doing, man? Like, like, we talk about it, like, there's, there's, there's people that are never going to be able to do anything with their kids again. Let's be yeah. honest, uh -huh. and we have a we have a great opportunity, and and we're always thinking we're busy, 
and that's the other thing I want. Hopefully, you guys understand is like, don't ever think you're too busy because you're not. Like everybody's like, I can't do this. I'm too busy. You're not. Yeah, we th- we think we're busy, but we're not. Re- we're not really busy. Yeah. We're just we're just not doing. We're just not being productive with our time. You're I just think. scrolling through Facebook or something. Yeah. So like like you said, man, you're like, oh, I know Sundays are crazy busy for you, but that's this thing meant so much to me. Like I would have cleared anything that we had because this is this is a cool. That. No, it's cool, man. I'm like again. I, this is this is such a an honor. Like I'm so proud of 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 you guys. Like I said, um, and I you know you could be too busy, right? And you're, you know, you're tired, you get home late, you're worked, you know, or you drive back from the Springs and you're tired and, you know, your niece wants you to read a book and you're just like, I don't feel like it, you know, tomorrow when you wake up, it's going to be 15 years down the road. She ain't going to care about you reading a book. You know what I'm saying? And you would love, like, I want my daughter to sit on my lap, right? And me read a book. And you know, it's going by so fast. It's like you gotta you gotta take advantage of the time you have now. Yeah, I heard a, I I listen to a lot of the other like uh, audio stuff podcasts. I don't know if you know this guy named uh, Patrick Bad David, but he said there comes a time where we're our our kids we're their heroes. They're like there's gonna be a time where they're not gonna care about us anymore. We're not gonna be their hero. And he's like he's talking about it. I don't think I'm ready for that. I'm not. I'm not ready for that day to come. And I, I personally level. I, I don't feel like I am either. So it's like, I'm not. But it's either. gonna come. It, but it's yeah. gonna come. So it's like appreciate. We gotta appreciate more. It's. I'm already seeing I it. Think. You know, like like Coop, man. Like he. Yeah, and I know how it is, man. Like he's like. Uh, he's like, yeah, it's it's cool, Dad. I can do it myself. And I'm like, what? You know, I'm like, really like. You know, like like little things like taking him into to school you know or dropping them off at school or stuff like that you know it's like he's like i'm good man see you like he just it's gonna be a day like hey you want to go catch a burger or something be like uh, i'm gonna go with my friends over here and be yeah like, oh, what, what's going on like that one song that like cats in the cradle is like it's it's just like that like you know like the little kid was like dad you want to play catch you want to play you want to get up i'm too busy i'm too busy and like oh okay and then he just keeps going through life saying he was too busy. And then the dad calls, he's older, and he's like, hey, hey, do you want to you wanna meet up? And he's like, oh, I'd love to, Dad, but I'm busy right now, so I can't. And it's full circle. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it, you know, that that's one thing, you know, losing, losing such close people in my life, too. That's my motivation of, of not leaving something you tomorrow that you can do today. You know, like today, not tomorrow, the TNT. Um, and that's, that's why, you know, and you always think about, you know, if if this was your last day on earth, what would people want to, what would people say about your last conversation? Oh, that's deep. That's, that's, that's the deep. They get you, they get, they get you thinking when you just sit there and just, I mean, I like to do that sometimes just kind of just pause, but then we're just pausing and just thinking like, what legacy do you want to leave behind and what are you doing today? to be able to achieve that absolutely and that's the thing right that's the legacy you know like um wins and losses people don't even know how many wins i've had or losses i've had or whatever but it's the relationships that matter right it's the it's the instant messages like hey coach would you want to come over and and do a podcast you know like little things like that or or um i'll send you know say happy birthday to somebody thanks coach because like i said the the things that the titles is is you know dad and coach mean a whole mean more to me than than you guys probably know so um it's crazy it's crazy to think about all the little things like that yeah like over here on, on my whiteboard behind me i have a i have two questions and I, every time i walk by there i, I try to read sometimes i'm just like ah, i skim them through but then sometimes i just stand there and i just think it says uh what kind of life do i want to live and what's the other one I forgot? And who do I want to be? And you just sit there. Sometimes you're just like, oh, like, you know, I just sometimes I'll go and I'll just stand there for 15 minutes. Like I'm not even kidding. Like, yeah. But I mean, it's or like other people who like deep. don't know, like or can't like vision themselves like in the future. I have like a vision board that I use, and I like find stuff that I want to be able to achieve like in the future. Take a picture of it, cut it out, or whatever, and then stick it up on that board. Like every time I'm in my office or just walking by. I see that and I picture it and then I'm like, okay, that's what I'm trying to get. So like, let me get back on my shit. Yeah. No, that, and that's, that's good stuff. Like I do the same thing. Right. Um, 
just just little things like that will bring you right back. Um, so I mean, like like tattoos are the same way, right? I have some tattoos that do that to me that the people who look at the tattoos and wouldn't even know what it means. But you know, I've got um, like I have one on my shoulder right where it talks about you know your your son's first hero and your daughter or your in your daughter's first love, and but there's there's stars all around it. And then there's falling stars and there's shooting stars and stuff like that. Uh, and that's, you know, those are the ones that I've lost throughout my life. Um, but, you know, that's that's your motivation of, of uh, you know, how, who do you want to be? Like, you know, the, the craziest thing, like I did an assignment, I did it with my class, actually. My ambassador's class, my leadership class is like, uh, write your obituary. And if you, you guys should do that someday, just write your obituary. And talk about deep, like, you're writing, and you're like, oh, my God, you know, I, it's hard. It's, like, hard to say, you know, what you've done or what you've accomplished or, you know, like, what you've been known for. But it's it, at the same time, it's something that's it's a good reflection. Yeah, I heard I, I heard this one guy talking one hit. His name's Ed Milet. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, and he talks about, he's like, I'm chasing that, that next version of me. He's like, I don't want to get, like, to my to the end of my days and be like you you meet with with god and he's like this is the person you could have been and mm. this is the person you were because you did one decision if like you wanted to go out and party you didn't want to read a book you don't want to like you know and this is the person you could have been and like that that person's a person's a complete stranger like we want to get to that point and be like he's like my twin he's exactly like me you know but it's the small de de decisions when i'm all throughout life but i feel like bigger when you're like younger you know it's it's hard right it's hard it's hard to go look back and that's the thing that kind of makes me nervous too is because i think back when i was young and stupid you know and i'm thinking oh my god my, my kids are about to be that age too you know and that's i'm like scariest thing, man. like and you know it's, yeah. it's funny it's like like even your incident when you got in trouble it's like if you guys remember back like if something happened, I knew about it probably before you guys were even done doing it. Oh right? yeah, yeah. Oh for sure. And it, that's why that day, I mean, I remember that the next morning, I was like, I need. I was telling Eric the other day, I was like, I had to be the first person to text him. He, I was like, he probably already fucking knows. But yeah. I have to be the first person because if you find out from someone else, it's like it's worse. Like you know. Yeah, it, you know that's that's crazy. And you know the problem is too is probably because I've already done it before. You know, and that's the thing. It's like all those little things like. You know, you kind of you kind of understand a lot of different different things because you've seen it happen or you know like that. But um, going back to that, it's like you know, like I said, it's like that was one of two ways that you could have handled that. Like you could you could have used it as a lesson, or you could have you know used it as a crutch. Um, and, and I mean, th those things kind of like I'm telling you, they kind of like still to this day, I still think about it, and they, I feel like they kind of haunt me. Like I still have it in the back of my mind, and like from like the last six months till now, I probably haven't even drank a six pack, like really? in the whole six months. And it's like that because I'm telling you, like I'm not the person I was yesterday. Like I need to evolve, and that that's been one of my things that that I I have uh, those talks with my wife and stuff. Is I don't want like my daughter to ever see me drunk, right. you know. So that that's my like, I'm not I'm not gonna do it, you know. That's not that's not who I want to be. It's not who I want her to, to like you said, li live every day like it's your last. I don't want to have that right. reflection of me just drunk all the time or you know, doing bad stuff. And that was you know that was one of the things that I still do is like you know, you have an occasional beer here and there, but you know, like going to cables and getting. You know, wasted lit. and yeah. stuff yeah and they're like well that's the head football coach look at him he's falling down you know it's it's you have an image also yeah but so what happens if that was somebody brand new that nobody knew who you were and then they see you and that's their first that, that's you yeah uh -huh. that's your first impression so that's who they think you are right um and that's you know that's kind of you know another good thing that we do is we we talk about like uh your windows like you know like your appearance or how how people how people react to to your image right or who, who they think you are is how they sometimes treat you, you know? like if you treat a kid like a punk he's going to be a punk right if you give that kid a chance he you know he he's going to he has yeah. a chance right he'll mm -hmm. maybe he's still a punk yeah but at yeah. least you gave him a chance not to be a punk yeah, um true. Like I always think about that one story with that uh, the 
preacher who was like he dressed like a homeless man in front of his steps of his own congregation i don't know if you heard of that but mm-hmm. um people just walked by and he was begging for money and like there's some people are in his congregation that were rude to him or like ignored him and stepped away and, you know some people gave him a little bit of change here and there but overall they were not you know receptive of him and they go into the church we're holier than thou you know what i mean so look at me i'm you know i'm dressed nice and i'm this and that but there's a there's a person outside that needed their help and they didn't want to do it right because that's below them, and then the preacher comes in and he's still in you know like a bomb and he's walking to the front and you could like, people are like we're like what? yeah like all like what's going on blah 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 and he gets to the front he takes off his disguise, you know and that's just you know that's that's impactful like you know like don't ever don't ever judge a person by by the cover and you you know like the the glass backpacks you don't know what's going on you know like with with me being in education and in coaching like you don't know the backstory of why maybe somebody's having a bad day at right? home and stuff with yeah. the guy going you on you don't know that maybe they didn't eat breakfast because little brother has had to eat the last breakfast because they don't have any or that they have to work t- double shifts and then and then drive their their brothers and sisters all around to get them to school that's why they're late you know the people don't think that all they were like ready to say is like you know you're late and you know like Sometimes I feel like people want to teach the the subject and they don't want to teach the kids. You know what I mean? They don't want to teach. They just they think, well, I got to get this job done and then I got to be to point A and point B by next week. But they're not they're not really taking a step back and and looking to see, you know, like why why is uh why is you know little Billy struggling? You know, like make a connection like you know you good you're all right and you know you maybe maybe you'll find something else that's going to help that kid or you know give that kid a chance and, and and want him to be successful um and that's the thing that's that's that was that's my that's who i want to be right i want to be that guy i want to be the you know i want to be known for that guy that you know that's always giving somebody a chance or you know that i'm there for like i've always told you if you guys ever need anything let me know and stuff like that like i want it to be where you know, it's twenty five years down the road, and you're still calling me coach. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I feel, that's like, I feel like I would always feel like mm-hmm. it's that relationship, sure. yeah. though. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just like that's what you want. But yeah, a little bit on that. I mean, I I, I, I kind of I love it what you're talking about because my daughter barely started going to school and have I have very fucking strong opinions on the like the school system, how that stuff works. Why do you think other people, other teachers, like it's not just to bash on teachers. Like, don't don't put the jacket on if it don't fit you. But it's like. Why do you think some teachers are, or some people are like that? You know, they kind of just, here's your homework, here you go, yep. take it home. And- because it's sometimes it's boxes to check, right? Like, is it, do you think it's like people, they don't, they don't care or they're just doing it to get paid? Yeah. You know, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm, I'm the best educator in the world. So, I mean, obviously people are going to get mad if they hear all this, but it, it is that it's like, it's a, it's a job for them, right? It's a 730 to 315 job. Right, it's not with summers off. Right, but you, that's not, in my opinion, that's not how I I want to be. Right, it's not. I didn't ever, you know, when you guys were in high school, did you ever see me take a summer off? You saw me every day. Oh yeah, right, every day. Uh-huh. And that's the thing is like, you got, it's it's not. It is a job, but it it should be a lifestyle. A lifestyle. Yeah, yep, exactly. And you should want to. You should want to. You know, again. I want to be a teacher that my son's going to have or my daughter's going to have. You know, and I don't, I don't want to be a, you know, I'm going to get, I got to get this done, this done, and I don't care what's going to happen. It's already written down in my planner, so I'm getting it done, and I don't care if we if we just, you know, leave, <clears throat> leave somebody behind, but we're, we're moving forward. Um, and unfortunately, that, you know, that's, I see that. I see that in a lot, and, I, and not just in education, but in, in, in the real world, too. You know, there's just, like, some people get caught up in just doing a job but not living their job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel- on, on something like that, we're, we're me and Eric were talking about, like, I seriously can sit down and go through, like, teachers that we've had, and I don't think I, – I straight up think you're – you're probably like the only one that we've had that actually, you know, that goes through that process, you know, like that actually cares more, you know. There's there's another one. There's, there's another teacher too. But, I mean, you're like the number one. And, I mean, and I, mean I wasn't the only one because he had it too. And Diego had it. Like we – and other people I've talked – everyone's had it. You're like the only one. So, it's like 
Oh, I think. <laughs> but Diego uh, never talked though. All the only thing Diego would say was "she." She. And, and then just comb his hair. And yeah. He's always going like this. She. <laughs> yeah. no, but I think like every every teacher, I think at some point it felt like that too. And then I feel like just like throughout the years, they just got like worn out and just maybe tired of the, the own educational system. Or do you think it was kind of like the how you were talking about like the punk kid? Like mm-hmm. they get punked, so like the teachers were like that with them. So like. I got to I got to do this too, you know? Or do you think yeah, maybe? Yeah. So? No, that that could be exactly it. like it, it, and let's be honest, man, it's it's going to be your it's your A&E as a as a teacher too. Like if you come in there but my my attitude is like, man, I got Eric and and uh Monaco coming in and they're freaking punks, man. I can't stand this class. I can't wait to get this class over. Guess what? Your effort is going to be that, right? I'm going to treat you like punks and then you're going to you're going to get that you you know, it's the whole respect thing like I'm going to give you 100% respect and I, you know, and I, some people want to demand respect, right? And you, you don't got to earn it. You got to, yeah, mm-hmm. you, you should command respect. There like a go. demand and command is a whole different thing. Like, and a command is like, like, it's not like, hey, you're going to respect me. It's not that. It's, it's the treat you like a human, find out who you are, find out who Eric is, what, what, is, what makes him tick and make that little connection. And then all of a sudden, like, oh. He thinks I'm a real, you know. He he's thinking me as a as a person, not just a, you know, another student, you know. And that's you know that that ties into the the football world, right? Like he really cares about me, so I think I'm gonna give him everything that I have because he's given everything I have, you know, to to me, you know. And the respect is there, and and uh, I I wish that was more evident, um, and it's sad to see because it's a great it's a great tool you know like you as an educator you 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 can you can mold or you can destroy and you're you know an educator is an ed, you know a lot of people think oh is that teacher is it just a teacher but man they they mold everything right yeah, it's like they're like mm-hmm. oh he's, he's going there it has to be right just because they're saying you know right and it's it's right it's only it's it's not i mean i, I, have, I have very strong opinions on that. that's a that's a rabbit hole for me but i mean uh you know, I, one one of the things that I remember the most, like, uh, like right before we'd like leave the locker room for, for like the shed for the game, that like we'd like all uh, like take a knee and like say a prayer. Um, so like, are you like religious, like very religious, or just a little somewhat? Or no, I, that's that's one of the things that like, kind of like stuck with me a little bit. I am religious, you know, and I and I still do the Lord's prayer, and I and I've and I've told my wife, and I've told everybody, I said if they fire me for doing the Lord's prayer, then that's fine. Um, but I always remember it to be only if you want to, yeah. and then everyone kind of yeah, you know, you know, like I'm not gonna force it on you. Yeah, right? I don't want to force my beliefs on you. I'm not gonna force a prayer on you. Or, but only if you want to is is a is an opportunity for you not to to feel pressured to do it. But, yeah, um, yeah, you know. Um, Did you always do that since uh, since you started coaching, or was it just something I just? Yeah. Happen one day. No, I've always done it. I've always done that. And, uh, and let's be honest, though, if you think about it, like if you go back into it right now and you close your eyes and you, you, you're you on a knee and you're saying the Lord's Prayer and it's echoing, I don't think there's anything more powerful oh, yeah. than that. Chills. Either. Right? Chills. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And then we then we did our Mustang Creed, you know, our, and then uh, then I would do the, the pregame speech and then we'd run out of the yeah. halftime shed. You know, it's like... I just remember that you'd be before the game. You're like, because I take it into life, like visualize where you want to go and be. Right. And you'd, I remember you'd make it before the game. You'd close your eyes, visualizing how the game was going. And if, like, if you re- truly visualize it, I, it goes. And that's the kind of goes into life also. That's what I'm telling you. Like, a lot of the things, like, I started reflecting back. A lot of the stuff you did, I'm just like, this is not like, I don't mean to, like, to say anything bad to you, but like, this motherfucker's on another level. Like, <laughs> if I was, like, thinking like this when I was, like, Still in high school, like damn, you know. <laughs> and I, you know, it's like, and it was funny that you say that because, like, and I, if you can remember, I'd always tell you, you know, I know you guys don't understand this now because you guys are young, yeah. but this is a life lesson, right? And like the whole, mm-hmm. like, if you don't think we're gonna win tonight, then then you're never gonna want to win in life. If you think you can't do it because they're bigger than you, you're always gonna have that little that little monster in your head saying that you're not good enough, and until you defeat that you're not going to grow. Yeah. So, yeah, that, you know, that's kind of funny as you say that because I, I'm, it makes me, that makes me proud. It makes me, you know, feel good. 
like those little things that you guys are saying is like you you remember those because I always I always wonder you know like you know am I am I doing my job you know and like you know like you guys have not talked about one single time that we won a game right you haven't talked about the scores that we scored you haven't talked about anything about like the, that it's like the it's like what you have everywhere on the locker room weight room the family yeah you had stickers everywhere of it you know yeah and it's, it's family or, that, so. or earlier when you said like when we beat holy family because that's that was like a while since like we went to the playoffs but like i don't remember the game but i remember the celebration afterwards and I remember, I remember when they were crying and they were carrying out two cakes the because cakes. they made their cakes and they had them before. They had them before. <laughs> yep. And oh, sorry. Shout and, out to Holy Family for fucking losing. <laughs> and then, and then I was like, "You want us to take those?" And she didn't think I was funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah oh, that's no. Great. That, that's awesome. You know, that's the thing, man. That's like that was the other thing too. Is like I wanted, I wanted you guys to feel like we were going into a war, but I wasn't gonna sit back. Like, I wasn't going to be the guy on the horse sitting on top of the hill. Like, I'm I was leading. Be, yeah, I'm I wanted leading to be in the, the front yeah. of the war. Mm -hmm. um, I probably ran my mouth more than you guys ever did. Um, you know, and it, that's that's just kind of who I was. Like, I've always, I always had to be that that little bit of fighter, a little bit of an edge. Um, do you remember the, the fine line between confidence and cockiness? Oh, yeah. That, I'd see that's another thing I never forget is, like, you – and it's you right straddle there. it yeah yeah and you straddle it right mm -hmm. you gotta that, catch yourself before you go too far yeah, that way and be like hey 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 and that's, Some, life will humble you for sure don't worry will. Will. and that's exactly right mm -hmm. man it's like you gotta you gotta be able to do that and be able to uh to find out what you want to do and, and and how you're going to get there but but come in there with that swag like if i came in for a job interview and i kind of like just was like sitting down and like had my shoulders slopped down and my eyes down and said well i think i can you know Game over, right? Yeah, they, don't, they don't care sure. about it. But if you walk in with some little bit of swag and like, uh, you know, like take charge, yeah, take charge of the conversation, we, you know, and be like, hey, here's my vision, and this is how I'm going to get there. And if you guys want to go, let's go. If not, that's fine. I can go somewhere else and do it. You know what I mean? And it's like that's that that's the really really fine line. Be like, oh, this dude actually he's confident, but man, he's kind of a he's kind of cocky with that stuff. But you know, that's kind of the thing you want to do, right? And like, it's like when you sell. Like if you want to sell a product, you gotta sell a product. Like you gotta sell like it's like. First you gotta believe. It. I I mean I I read a lot of stuff about this, but first you gotta believe it. Maybe that way you can be able to sell. But it's like yeah, it's like. Well yeah, <laughs> people are gonna people are gonna see right through you. Like if, oh, you, yeah. if you're not if you're not buying the product yourself, but you're trying to sell it, they're like. It ain't happening. It's like, hey, I got this shampoo, makes your hair grow, and then you see your hat, your ball, yeah, and you're yeah. like, what the fuck is yeah, going on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm good with that. No, well, thank you. I, I like that you kind of go in, like, all, the, all this stuff you're saying, like, do you think there should be a class or something, like, in like in sc high school or something? Like, you know, you're saying, like, showing how to people, like, how to go into a job interview, how to do little stuff, the little stuff, you know. You go into a room, you know, make some eye contact right. with the guy, you know. And that's, I, feel I, like they I actually, actually got to start one down at Well Central, which is kind of cool. It's called the Ambassador. Oh, really? And, and that's kind of what I do is, like, we talk about it, right? And, uh, you know, so when I was going back to this, so when, when I was a, was I was an administrator at Fort Morgan, my administration, like, my, my discipline was, was a little bit different from how a lot because I wanted, I wanted to treat it like a lifestyle, like a kitchen table. Like, yeah. if, if I'm looking across at Cooper and I'm telling him, like, if, if somebody walks in, you know, you sit up straight, you get off your phone, you look them in the eye, you shake their hand, say yes, sir, no, sir, and those kind of things. But, yeah, and this ambassador class that I'm getting to teach is kind of cool because it's like uh, we're able to to go through all those things and we talk about the, the windows and we talked about, you know, um, you know, the iceberg analogy, you know, oh, yeah. where, you know, that's what, you know, that little tip is what people see, but your character's underneath, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's something that you... You know, everybody wants to shine in the light, but nobody wants to work in the dark. Yeah. So, um, everybody wants to be a badass. No one wants to do the things the badass does in the right, dark. Right. You know? Yeah. You, everybody, yeah, everybody wants to wear that jersey on Friday, but when you have to show up and you have to lift every morning or be there every day or, you know, go through those two a days in the August and where it's hot and, and go through all that stuff and, and, and do the little things that people don't understand, like make sure your grades are good, make sure you're staying out of trouble, make sure you're taking care of business on the on the field and, and being a champion outside the, the chalk. You know, everybody everybody just shows up on Friday and, and thinks it's it's a game. But it's yeah. it wasn't it's not a game, right? It's it's a 
it's a lesson it's a lesson in life so is that class something that like you kind of like brought to the table and said you wanted to do this or yeah was it? and i tied it into a business thing so it's kind of a, it's, i can tie it into a, a you know like a business leadership type credit so it's it's kind of cool and like um it's similar to I don't know if you guys were there whenever we did our, our leadership class. Did you, were you in my leadership class? I don't think so. I wasn't there. So that was started way after you guys left too, but it's something like, I, and I treat it like big brother, big sister. So like like we would go to Sherman and read, you know, and like because sometimes, you know, that that's the only male influence that maybe they see, right? And they get to see, you know, or, or you know, a grown-up, you know, and, and getting some attention, you know, like help them with math, help them with reading, or just go outside and play with them, you know, and that's something that we do. And um, we're really involved with the Special Olympics and Special Needs and, 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 you know, teaching them, you know, like the importance of life and the importance of, you know, treating people with respect. You know, like if there's trash on the floor and you step over it, because in my mind, that's why we have janitors, shame on you right because you're not yeah. mm-hmm. nobody's above any job right that janitor is working they're working as hard as they can to provide for their family that doesn't mean that they're no less exactly. of a person than than a ceo of a company you should be able to treat everybody exactly the same yeah. that's when you can see it kind of goes back to the analogy you were using of the, of the, the church iceberg. or the dog on thing about the church one you know, you should be able to treat everybody the same. You say you want to help everybody, like, let's see what time's going to be. If you're be holier than now, be holier than now everywhere else. Right? Yeah. Not just inside that church building. Yeah, that, that's, that's huge. Uh, on some of that, you, like, you, so you're, you're like a lot of sports and stuff. Do you think, like, physical activity is, like, a must for, like, especially like, for everybody, but, like, for young people, especially they got s- stuff going on in their house, you know, do you think it's a must that people should do some sort of physical activity? I don't to know. To kind of release some demons they got yeah, going, you know? I mean, I wish, I wish they could because, you know, like I said, you know, if you go back again, thinking about it, like, it's kind of funny that we're talking about these things, but I can remember us being all in the classrooms and stuff and talking about all these lessons. But, you know, for for that brief moment of time, you, you get to be kids, right? You get to be heroes. You don't have to worry about a cell phone bill that you have to pay. You yeah. don't have to worry about going home and, 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 and taking care of your little brother or little sister. You don't have to go to a – you're not showing up to go to work a double shift so you can help pay for, you know, um, Whatever bills. Yeah, right? And that that's why, that's why I loved being here because we had that. You know, we had the those – those um, players that, that, you know, like, for example, whenever we beat Evergreen in the playoffs, you know, the person that took the touchdown back, as soon as the celebration was over, left, he went and worked a double shift at McDonald's, right? I mean. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's why we beat teams that were probably more talented than us because we – we worked harder and we we appreciated it more because we didn't have all that yeah, stuff. All the, yeah. all the luxury stuff. We didn't have yeah. we didn't have the, the checkbooks to open up and be like, Oh, you wanted this? Here you go. Just you know, we couldn't look at mom and dad and just have them pay our way out of stuff. Like we had to work, right? Mm-hmm. Um like you guys, like you guys you guys drove forever to come yeah. to Morgan. Oh yeah. yeah right? It was, it was, and then you distance. had to go home and work. You know, you had to work in the store. I mean there was like those are little things that nobody knew, right? And those are the kinds of the, the things outside the, you know, that was kind of cool. They, they made it such a, a dynamic thing. And, you know, well, Central has that, that similar um, dynamics that I'm, you know, just starting to tap into. They're starting to figure out who I am now. Yeah, that's that's good kind of what you're saying. Like, everyone has like a... a uh a battle nobody knows about. But it's like you're saying you, we had to go over there and work over there. It's like... I hate, they'd give you homework like me personally like they'd give me homework I'm just like dude I'm, I'm not gonna do your homework like do you know what I got going on after yeah. here like is a like it, we got a lot of stuff going on but that's, but but we go back to that so that's the thing right like nobody knows exactly like, because I got to give you homework because it tells me to give you homework we got to get this chapter done because they're telling me to get this chapter done like like that's the that's the thing that's just push frustrating your agenda, yeah. right it's just that's the frustrating thing is like. You know, if we just step back and, and just kind of figure it out who's who and what's what and what makes it work, you know what I mean? Like, I think you would have walked out of there um, 
with just as much knowledge, if not more, if sometimes people would just just take a step back and figure out, like like you guys were good in school, like there was never an issue, right, with school, right? Yeah, um, for the most part. <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah, that's but you, that's good because yeah. because of how you were raised, right? Because yeah. your parents expected you to do. There was, I guess I, I'm. They didn't listen to excuses from you guys, huh? No, <laughs> no, no. You could you could bring one, but she ain't gonna listen. Yeah, right? you could listen. Like, you know, it's like that's the thing. It's like, and that's that's why you guys are gonna be successful, and that's why everybody else is gonna be successful with uh, so many different things. Is because they're not afraid to work because that that's the only thing they know, right? You know, it's like easy. Oh, I can't get this done because of this and this and this and, but there's no excuses, these, no explanations, right? Yeah, yeah, no excuses. Now, on, on on some of that, like all the stuff you're talking about, what are some non-negotiables you have that have helped you create the person you are today? Uh, making excuses, like like I can't, I can't tell you guys to. Um, you know, I can't be two faced. Yeah. Right. I can't expect you to do something that I'm not doing myself. You know, it's like. Um, Does it happen to you sometimes where you do something and you're just like, and then you kind of like, bang, yeah. like damn, like hey, yeah, hey, it's hey, like don't. like I'm two faced. Like, and I'll be honest with you, like enjoy the moment. Like I'm telling you guys, enjoy the moment. But I don't know if I enjoyed the moment as much as I should have. Right. Um, and that, that, that bothers me because I, I need to enjoy the moment. I need to enjoy those things because I get caught up in, in wanting you guys to be successful and not, not just taking a step back and looking back and around and watching and just taking it all in. Um, cause there's a lot of, I mean, we could go on memories for days, you know, just talking about the little things we, you know, talking about like the things that used to make us laugh and then things that used to make us mad and, and you know, those things. But, um, that's, that's a, you know, that's one of the non-negotiables and you know, I gotta be, I gotta be who I am. Right. Like if, if I'm not a, if, if you're not a, like a raw, raw type of guy, then don't be a raw, raw guy because yeah. they're going to see right through don't, you. Yeah, don't right? fake it. Yeah. If you're not, <clears throat> You know, if, if if you came from a lot of a lot of money and you're privileged and you can't you can't be like, I know exactly what you guys are going through and I know what it means like not to have money. No. No, no. you don't. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. you don't. But so you gotta be who you are. Uh be truthful to yourself. Um and you know and you, you gotta you gotta remember why you do what you do. And that you gotta you gotta go back to your why and like why why am I doing what I do? And and that's, an, you know, you got to reflect. It's, and it's sometimes it's tough, you know, and then looking back and be like, I'm losing my why, you know, and that's kind of where I was at. I lost my why, you know, when I was, I lost coaching, I lost my why, I lost my who I was, you know, and I go to Walmart, remember, you know, the chicken guy doesn't be like, hey, A.D. Chisholm, you know, that, that sounds weird, right? It's like, it's always Coach Chisholm because that's who I was, you know, and that's kind of, you know, that's kind of where I, I came back to it because I, I missed it, and um, you know, I, just, I feel, I feel, that's who I am, right? That's what I was put on this this earth for, is to, to do that, and and to to hopefully make impacts on on some so, individuals. Is is that like your why? Do you think that that pushes you, like that? Yeah, or, absolutely. Yeah, just. Do you think it? Do you think at different times in your life it kind of changes or you kind of like adjust like you know yeah, tweak it, a little bit or how? yeah it does i mean obviously um you know you, your why is you know before was you know football is all, it was all football right yeah. well then i get married and then my why was football my wife and then football and then it was my my kids came into the picture you know it's like you know i have something in my my downstairs and it's uh it's family, faith, and football, right? And those are the three Fs. And uh, those are the things that, uh, you know, those are kind of your your whys. And, you know, why do I do what I do? Why do I get up every day? Is because I want my kids to know that you get up every day. Do you get up after after you win and, and be happy and excited? Sure. Do you want to stay in bed all day after you, if you, you failed at something that you weren't great at? Absolutely, but you can't. 
right? Do you want to go in the hallways when you lose? No. Do you want to go in the hallways when you win? Absolutely. So what's the difference? Why Why is that okay? You know what I mean? So you got to face mm-hmm. adversity and, uh, you know, and just, just know that, you know, you, you win with class and you lose with class, right? And and like we always said, though, we don't ever lose. We just run out of time because if you, if you say that you you lost football games, that that labels you as a loser, and I would never think of you as a loser, right? And that's why we always mm-hmm. said, you know, we come up short or we ran out of time because you got to be careful because if you lost something or you failed at something, that labels you as a, as a failure and a loser, and that's not who you are. Exactly. You have to take the, the noun, like the noun out of like, I didn't, we, we didn't win, but it's like you, when you put, I'm a loser, you know, mm-hmm. you're saying that you're, you're calling yourself a loser. Like, right. no, I, we didn't win. It's different, you know, yeah. how, how you, how you phrase it. Cause you tell your stuff, your mind, your mind will play some games on you. It'll make you believe stuff. It ain't, if it even, it, it is. It's not it, true. It, it's all about how you phrase things. Exactly. And it's like, it's like, so like, for example, like down there was a, a young man got in trouble, right? Because of how he wanted, like he expressed something like he, they can't wear hats. And like, he, you know, basically said, well, that's stupid and blah, blah, blah. And he went off. Right. So, I pulled him aside and I said, your point is exactly right, right? Your opinion is your opinion. And how you want, what you think of why is spot on, but it's how you present yourself, right? If you present yourself like that, they're not going to listen to you. If you, if you calmly just be like, hey, this is, this is where I'm at. You may not, you may not. They might agree with you. They you may might, agree they, with they you and they may not, but at the end of the day, they're going to listen to you. Yeah. If you come mm-hmm. off like that and then you, the way you present it, if you present it in a negative manner, they're going to, they're going to react to it in a negative the, manner. That, that's the bit, like thing, like when I do it with like with my, with my daughter, like she'll do something and be like, if you, I mean, if you just go off on them, be like, hey, no. First thing, when she does something bad, first thing, you know, I don't, I don't call her out in public, you know, I'll pull her aside and be like, hey, could you come here? And the first thing you don't stand like I feel like you don't stand over someone and like like you know oppress them. That you know I get down, I get on a knee, I get on her level and talk to her. You know because mm-hmm. if I you start, they're not gonna listen to you. Nope. So it's like you get on their level, like hey, we shouldn't do this because of this, 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 this. And then you know, but see that's one of my biggest things. Like people raise their kids different stuff, but it's like me, like I I, I don't call her out in front of, in public. I don't call her out in public, or I don't yell at her, or I don't like hit her but i mean kids are kids people people have different ways of teaching them but i mean and you go back to like like when we talked about your you know when you got in trouble i mean we could have you know i could have stood up there and like made you stand up and be like this this is what he did and if you guys do this and you're going to be out you know and you know the the way we handled it probably got, committee eight, yeah, humiliation, yeah. That's a, <laughs> we got it across like how we wanted to is like you know we we need you both but we don't have you both and it's it's you know and that's that's adversity right so it's next man up but uh you know that's kind of again that's why i do the tough love stuff is like you know my my dad if he's mad at me okay i can handle that when he says he's disappointed man oh, that's, that that's that's <laughs> game over yourself. right yeah that that hurts because it's it's important right but if you know if you didn't, if you didn't feel valued and you didn't feel like football was something that was special to you, that mistake wouldn't have bothered you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, that's 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 good. I have, I have, I have a little. I heard. I was listening to a the video today. I want to get your take on it. The guy's talking about. He says, "Trying, trying is failing. Failing is learning. Most, mo- the most anxiety." Uh, people have is on test day, right? So you got a driving test, you got everything. So when someone asks you a question, like just in life, you want to get the right answer, right? Mm-hmm. So you're scared to say the wrong answer. So you, you, so you always want to have the right answer. So you're scared to do stuff. Do you think that kind of like limits people to their potential? Absolutely. Yeah. Fear, fear, fear is a fear is a is a crazy thing. So, like they said, like. Whether you say you can or you can't, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So, um, if you, but if you if you live yourself in fear, like if you're always afraid that you're not going to be successful, you're never going to be successful. I mean, we've already talked about this earlier, but that's that's the thing. Like that, 
you know that uh, I, I listen to a guy and, and he says uh, the guy that you know when you hear those things he, he calls it his little bitch right it's bitch in his her head. voice yeah and it's always telling you you're not good enough you're not good enough you're not smart enough yeah who who, who do you do you know, do you know I don't remember who said it to be honest with you because uh, I've heard of that, that yeah. David Goggins I don't know if you know him yeah but I don't it was uh, I've also heard of uh, Andrew Frisella. Uh, yeah, there's that. a lot of people that there's said a lot, there's but I, I mean, the David Guys, he's a little more <laughs> he's like un, like uncensored. Yeah, yeah like hard may, uncensored. I think maybe maybe it was him because he does a lot of those motivated speeches. But I, I mean, I listen to all those things so many times. Like I, maybe I should pay attention more. But like, who said that? Because if somebody asked me like you did, then I would have an answer. But um, that's the you know that's the that's the thing is like you got to face that guy, like you got to face that little demon. And uh, let them know that that because uh, it's easy, like it's easy to listen to, because you know, believing it, believing it's you know, your your mind is 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 such a powerful tool. It, yeah. it could it could go one way or the other. So it can, it can make make or break it. Be like, hey, come on, you know, come sit on the couch, you know, just watch the game. Right. You've done enough today. You're tired. Take a break. You know, and I, I mean, I I have that one one of my big no, non negotiables. Like I can't I'll go over three days without doing working out. Right, that's and that, that's what that's what I've noticed. Like in the past three years, you start to notice it with your family, you get like short temper, you know, and it kind of and that's, at least the demons, you know, that's that's like the vo- inner voice you say you're you're talking about. And before now, now when I drive, it it helps me because by the time I get home, I'm decompressed. But before, like one of my things that they already knew was like I would go downstairs and like for I was off limits for like ten minutes, just, just ten like, minutes, just leave, leave me alone. alone, yeah, so I can decompress because then that way you don't take it out on on somebody else. So yeah, um, that. Uh, Going back to that, uh, the demon though is like, we 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 uh, we hear it, you know, and in, in in believing, believing something like that, believing something like that is like, is something that'll take you, one way or the other, right? It's like, are you? It's so easy. It's so, it's so easy to hear that and and believe it, and you know, it's like self doubt and and it's a comfort thing, right? So if I if I don't, if I don't really give myself everything I wanted to for a job, and I don't get that job, in my head was like, oh, I didn't get that job. It's okay. But if you give, and because in your your mind is telling you, hey, you're not good enough for that. You're not going to yeah. get that job. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't get that job. But if you put everything you have in it, and then you happen to not get that job, that's gonna that will hurt you. But at least you knew, like you looked yourself in the mirror, right? That's the biggest thing. Is that mirror is a is a is a powerful tool. Like you have to look yourself in the mirror. Is like, am I am I the dad I want to be? Am I the husband I want to be? Am I the man that I want to be? Right? Every day you have to look yourself in the reaction, and and you can say, yeah, I am, but you know, you know, in your heart, you're not. One uh, one of the tests that I, I I mean I've done it myself. I don't know if you've tried it. You say you look yourself in the mirror, just just. Stand in front of the mirror, just like, and just look at like deep in your eye. Just, just do it for one minute. Just do it and just stand like deep in your eye. It's like, and you, you'll, you'll, you'll see if you're like lying to yourself. Yeah. And one of the things I saw on, on the back of your shirt says "All In." So I get that. I take that like, and with everything that I do, it's like, if I'm gonna do something, it's because I'm gonna do it like, with, like I'm gonna go all in and be able to do it. Because then if not, then I'm like cheating myself out of what I want to do. Like whether it's like. You were saying like for a job interview, like if you're gonna go and get it, you're gonna go all in, or else don't even try. Right. Or if you want to like start a business or something, you go all in, or else you're not gonna get the outcome that you're looking for or anything. Yep, all in is you know that's been with us for a long time, but all in is like ties right into attitude and effort, right? Because if if your attitude is like it's all in, then your your effort is gonna give everything you have. If you're like mm, I'm kind of in, then your effort's gonna be ah, I'm kind of in. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So you're just uh, sitting on the on the fine line right there. You know, yeah. If you're really like if I'm, am I really wanting to do it? Like, yeah, yeah. With the, with all that stuff, like the the inner voice stuff. I had an, a, another. I mean, I listen to a lot of podcast audios, but this one's from Alvar North Whitehead. It says the purpose of thinking is for our thoughts to die instead of us, because you we we think it. And then we're like, no, I can't do that. So you kind of convince yourself before you even tried it. And you're just like, no, you just throw it away. You know what I mean? This That's is, good. And it's, it, got me, it got me thinking yeah. today. It's like, 
that's we let our inner mm-hmm. voice convince us of of different things what do you think i think that's good i think i think it, you know it's, it starves you but it, it grows like you you're starving but your inner voice is growing right it's like it's like anything else it's like if you you know if you if you don't do it because you don't think you can like you're starving who you are but your inner voice is getting stronger because now next time you hear it you're like yeah you're right you know but it should be the other way around is like you should starve your inner voice like start starve that little the little demon in your head and and keep doing it because then before you know it that that little voice is going to be gone so. yeah that's true one of the things that i heard is uh from uh Andy Frisella, he says we we a lot of people think we only have one voice in our heads, but we actually have two. We have the bitch voice and we have the boss voice, and it's just who you pay attention to and who you give more, more like uh, what what you act upon more is like the one that's gonna get stronger. But then that other voice is always gonna be there, like no matter what. Like you can listen to the boss voice all you want, but then there's always gonna be times where there's gonna be self doubt and stuff. And yeah, that's. And that's 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 good stuff man i i love that kind of stuff you know it's like you know we talk about the grass is greener on the other side and and uh, comparison is a is a theft of all joy you know and um in, in your in your little mind is your know, little demons telling you like um you should be jealous of that person you know and they have everything and they have, i don't have anything and it's giving you all those negative things in your head but you know the grass is not always greener on the other side but the grass is greener where you water it so exactly Perfect. if you stay yeah. you know yep. if you stay strong with yourself and you you know and this is your if this is your section of grass then water it and grow and 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 do what you need to do to 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 be a better person and that'll take care of that little voice no that's awesome now chisholm coach chisholm i appreciate you sharing all these thoughts with us i mean it's good i mean you guys heard it you guys listened to this you guys heard it i mean from from husband to father to coach to to friend to family to mentor to everything you know he's a he's a big impactful guy in the community in everyone's life i mean and people people always remember all the stuff you've done for them so i mean we appreciate it appreciate you giving us our time for being on Appreciate everything. If you guys check this video out, make sure you you get into a, a Coach Chisholm's world, kind of see what the stuff, the good stuff he's doing, the, his coaching, his team, and we appreciate. Thanks for being on, guys. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. I and I, I'm serious, man. I'm so proud of you guys, and and, uh, and I'm proud of all the guys that are out there. So, um, you guys are doing what you need to do, and and and. You guys, what you're doing now is is amazing. So, I appreciate you guys, and and just know that I I love you guys, and and love all those guys out there that you know that's ever been a part of Mustang football. Okay, appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for being on. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Underrated, underrated, we the dogs, underestimated. Underrated, underrated, we the